Hi, my name is Katherine Grubner. I will be graduating from Beckman Catholic High School this spring, and this coming fall, I will be attending Iowa State University. Here at Iowa State, I plan to be active within the St. Thomas Aquinas Student Center, where I am able to maintain my standings of my pro-life beliefs, if and when questioned, on campus. When I first thought of what it means to be a voice for the voiceless, I thought mainly of speaking on behalf of those who are too afraid for their voice to be heard. But many times what happens is someone wants their voice to be heard and is going out saying their point, but no one is ready or willing to listen to them. Representing these people is a, becomes especially important in our society today. Right now, the world has been using relativism, which means choosing your own truths, as a way of life because it allows people to excuse any unethical behavior. Even when someone uses relativism to find some ounce of truth, society shuts them down because they may not be politically correct or their ideas too hard to accept. The pro-life movement has been one of these truths. There have been so many examples of society trying to shut down the pro-life movement because it is not easy to accept and to live by, especially with the morals that society allows. One example of this is the huge fines that pro-life activist David Dalbin had to pay because he was exposing society to what goes on behind the closed doors at Planned Parenthood. While he is going through legal trouble, his efforts to go out and give all these men and women affected by the dangers of abortion a voice makes the risk worth it in the long run. Along with Mr. Dalbin, another advocate who has been able to get past society's hopes of hiding them and their truths is Abby Johnson. Her new movie, Unplanned, has been able to open up so many more doors of conversation about the pro-life stance, and she has been an outstanding advocate for those who can't make themselves heard. So she first started on the pro-choice side, and that is now deeply pro-life. Anyone who has been too scared to change their beliefs or is questioning some of the morals of the pro-choice side are able to follow her previous example and share their voice too. She is letting so many people find the truth that they long for through her own voice. Now coming from a large family and as the third oldest of seven kids, there's been many times when some of us siblings have had to gather and chat to figure out a way to break some news to mom and dad or to ask them for something. Occasionally, this does mean asking one of the younger kids to act as a representative to ask mom and dad since they usually get their way. But now, sometimes, an older sibling has to stand up for one of the younger siblings and to speak for them to help our parents understand a full story. Having the siblings to rely on at home, in school, or just around in the community has been such a blessing when we have been too afraid to speak up and just don't know how to say something. They, gave a, they give us a voice that we can stand up with. Not only am I able to look up to examples of public figures such as Mr. Dale and Mrs. Johnson with the more personal examples of my siblings, but I also have the opportunity to live in a community that values life as much as I do. Growing up and seeing the dedication of the Dubuque County Right to Life has strengthened me in my pro-life views. The Dubuque County Right to Life has been blessed with so many donors, volunteers, and prayers sent to help them give support to those who need a voice throughout Dubuque through Mary's Inn and Clarity Clinic. I am so proud and honored to be able to support this organization that helps give a voice to the voiceless and to carry on the tradition of truth for the generations to come. Thank you very much.